All right, welcome to the programming lecture. And we are going to learn about how to do loops in Python, which you already know how to do in Scratch, right? It's just making code that comes back around on itself. And you just can go in a circle like that, it's wonderful. And then a new topic is called lists, where you can store a bunch of data in one place. So uh, without any further ado, let us begin with neither of those topics, because I want to talk about what happens when things go wrong in Python, OK? In Scratch, uh, every program works, like it's always going to do something, uh, and it's not really ever going to complain. But Python, you can mess up very easily because it's a more general purpose programming language, okay? Uh, and so uh, there are two kinds of errors in Python. The first is called runtime errors, and they happen when the program is running, okay? And they stop the program. So a runtime error is unrecoverable. Okay, it happens when your program is executing. Python isn't smart enough to know that it's going to hit it. And oh man, when it does, do bad things happen. So uh, because it's unrecoverable, the program has to stop. Okay, the program itself ends after a runtime error occurs. So the easiest example for me to show you this is division by zero. Are you ready? So, uh, I don't know. Let me, yeah. Let's do runtime error dot, dot pi or something, yeah? Let's do that. So let's save this in desktop. It's 21, CSI 1. I'm going to assume this is lecture 19. Yay. OK, let's call this runtime error. Errors.py. There we go. So now uh, let's get input from the user. The done x equals input, uh, enter a number. So x holds a number after we convert it to a number, of course. And then we're going to print dun 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 x divided by 0 is, comma, well, x divided by 0. Hey. Uh, oh, sorry. No. Uh, that's too easy. Let's make x be the thing that could be 0. Uh, let's do uh, 42 divided by x is. How about that? Because then sometimes the program works, sometimes it doesn't. Crazy, huh? So, and then we can do another line that we will sometimes get to, sometimes not. OK, so if x is 0, a problem happens, yeah? So if the user ever gives us 0 and we put that into x, we're about to divide by 0 right here. That's unfortunate. Uh, all right, here we go. Enter a number 37. Bam. Yeah, 42 divided by x is apparently this. It's a repeating fraction. OK, 0. Bam, red. OK, so first of all, notice the red. And at the very end, it says the kind of error that happened. Python is nice, and it tells us what went wrong. It also even tells us what line the error happened on, which is extra nice. So we can go and fix it if, uh, if it makes sense why that was a problem. Uh, so the program ended. Notice that we don't get to this line. We don't print another line like in the normal case. We have stopped the program because we tried to do something, and that something just didn't work out for us. OK, so that is a runtime error. OK, the other kind of error is a lot more subtle. It's called a logic error. And you might have heard it be called a bug before. OK, so maybe I should put that in bold. The word bug is shorthand for logic error. And the idea is your program's not going to crash. There's not going to be a runtime error. But something's going to go just subtly wrong. OK, uh, so a logic error or a bug is when you try to do one thing, but a, a different thing really ends up happening. OK, so you intend to do one thing, but actually doing another. For example, let's uh, here. I don't have to like save a file to show you this. Let's say that I don't know i equals I don't know 42, and then you make a new variable called like i plus two, and then you set that to be i plus one. You see that? So uh, it's supposed to be an equals sign. Let's fix that. That's better. So this is a logic error, because nothing bad happens in the program with you doing this line right here. But uh, it was obviously not what you wanted, because you called this plus 2, and you only gave it plus 1. Yeah. So this is a bug. When you print out i, it's going to be 43, though you wanted it to be 44. Okay. It is not going to crash the program. 
it's just going to do something different. Okay, that's the idea. That is uh, the two kinds of errors that you will see as you program. Uh, logic errors, bugs, they're no fun. Okay, it's hard to fix those. Runtime errors are nice because it tells you the exact line where something goes wrong. Okay, and you can usually print out things before that line happens to, to see what was the problem. Okay, so those are errors, and now let's actually talk about lists, which is part of the title of these slides. Okay, so wouldn't it be nice to store a bunch of things in one place? Like, for example, if you have a three-dimensional coordinate system, and you want to store, like, this dot right here, which is go out a bit this way, go out a bit this way, and then go up to right here, then you have to store three coordinates, like, I don't know, two, three, five, okay? You have to store all those coordinates. Uh, and right now, all you know how to do is, like, say, okay, x is two, y is three, and z is five. And unfortunately, you have a bunch, you have three different boxes, x, y, and z, sitting around in your program that hold those values. That's no fun, because the second you want to use these, in a different part of the program, you have to like transmit them over here. You have to keep track of three variables at once. That's unfortunate. That's no fun. So, uh, one way to solve this problem is with what's known as a list. So if you put a bunch of things, they don't have to be numbers, they could be anything, between these brackets, you get what is called a list. Okay, so you'd pronounce this syntax as the list, one, two, three. Okay, and the order is very important because the first thing in the list is one, the second thing is two, the third thing is three. Gotcha? That is important. And for Python, as far as Python is concerned, a list is one single thing. So let me go to the REPL. Here is the list, one, two, three. Yeah, it's all together. It's like the whole thing. We get it right back out. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Those are lists. So if I make a new file, call it lists.py, then we can have some fun with lists. Because, because they're just one thing, you can put them into a variable. So you can say x equals 1, 2, 3. And now suddenly, or 2, 3, 5. Let's, let's be all the way. Let's, let's say p for point equals the list 2, 3, 5. Yeah? Now we've kept track of everybody, and they're all in one place. It's wonderful. So let me show you that. p equals 235. And we can print p. Bam. We've just printed p, which is 235. It holds the whole darn list. So like p itself is the list, 235. It's all in one spot in memory. It's wonderful. You might after you put something in a list, want to get something back out. So we should definitely talk about how to do that. So uh, because you give them an order, you can get them out in order as well. Okay. So uh, that is that is the idea. So let me first talk about the other way of building up a list because you don't have to start with just the numbers. Okay. You don't have to say, okay, the list is one, two, three. It's never going to change. You can start from scratch. You can start from an empty list with ha which has nothing in it. So this is the empty list. Wee. X is the empty list. And we can print X just like any other list, and it just has nothing in it. Yeah, that's all. So X is the empty list right now. But we can give it things. That's the beauty of it. Uh, and we can put stuff in it from here. OK? Dun, dun, dun. You can add to lists. Do I say this over here? No. You can add to lists with the plus. Oops, why does that look so spaced out? I think I was fixing a problem the last time. There we go. You can add to lists. Plus operator. You can add two. You can also add two lists. That's I guess that's the idea. Let's keep it like that. Plus operation, plus operator, however you want to say it. Uh, here's the idea. If you have dun dun one, two and then you add that to the list 3, 4, you get back the big list, 1, 2, 3, 4. Isn't that fun? So, if, for example, if we do this on the REPL, it's like this. List 1, 2, plus the list 3, 4. And this is how you can build up from an empty list. You can be like, okay, start with the empty list. Let's, uh, let's add a 1. 
yeah, now it's the list one. That's, that's how you can do it. You can start at empty and then add more and more and more, one at a time, plus the one, plus the list with just two in it, and they all go in order. Yeah, so this is how you can give it things. It'd be like, okay, all right, x, x equals x plus the list one. x equals x plus the list two. So now x holds the list one, two. If only I could spell print correctly. So you see how it's going from the empty list to the list with just one in it to now finally when we print it out, the list one, two. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, okay, once you put a bunch of stuff in it, maybe you kept, you lost track. So you can say len l, where l is a list, any list at all, uh, and that'll give you the size of that list. So for example, len of one, two, will give back the answer two. Okay, here we go. Let me show you that. So I can say len one, two, and I'll get back the answer to. I can print in the program, I can print len p. And that should print one, two, three, because it's got three things in it. Yeah, there's the three. That's nice. So uh, we can get the size of the list. Uh, so that tells us all the things, it like counts all the things that are in there. But now how do we get the stuff back out? And this is where it's a bit tricky. So when you make your list X, let's say it's, I don't know, let's say it's one, two, three. Then X looks like this inside your program. I'm gonna draw it a bit weird. I'm gonna draw it with three different parts because it's got the one part, it's got the two part, it's got the three part in the memory, right? This is what it looks like in, in your computer's memory. Now, if I want to get the two out, I have to say where it is. I want to like get the two out of this X list. I have to what's known as index in to the list. Okay, that's how you access or change an individual element. You use its index where it ever, wherever it is in the list. And the unfortunate fact when you're starting out with computer science, uh, after you get this drilled in your head, it just makes perfect sense for the rest of your life. But right now it's going to be a bit confusing because I'm telling you that the first index is the number zero. Because in computer science, we like to uh, start at zero for things. The second place in the list, the two, where the two is, it's at index one, we say. And the three is at index two, okay? That is the trick. As long as you remember that the indices start at zero, you can get out any, el any element of the list. So if you want the first element, you have to say, please Python get me x at index zero. The list x at index zero. Okay, and this is what you do. This is how you access or like get it to be able to change it. Of a certain index, you say the name of the list, then you give the brackets, and then in the middle of those brackets, you put the index that you want. So x at zero gives back one. x at two gives back three. Yes, that is the key. Okay, so let me show you this because it's weird, I know. Uh, let's say print x of zero, because right here it's uh, x is one, two, it's the list one, two. Uh, print x of zero, that should be the one. Yes, save, that's the one. And then we can print x of two, because remember x is one, two. Uh, or sorry, x of one, and that gets the second element, yeah? It's a runtime error to try and access any more. This one doesn't work. List index out of range doesn't exist. This one doesn't exist. So when you're starting out and you're doing your lab or your program assignment, you might notice this error a lot and it's most likely because you're thinking the indices start at one when really they start at zero. Uh, you can also come from the back. Uh, you can go this way. You can be like, I don't know where the end is, but I want to access the end, please. You can say x at negative one for this example, and that will give you the three. That like starts at the end, yeah? It like goes backwards, please, negative one indices backwards, and it wraps around. So it's not equal to three, it gives back three, sorry, I should use an arrow. 
That's uh, that would be wrong to say it otherwise. And then x of like negative two gives back the two because it's two from the end. Like there's one from the end, there's two from the end. And so this is weird because it's not it's not like negative zero. It's like you have to go backwards. You have to wrap it around starting at zero. So these ones might actually make more sense than these indices. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, the last index is negative one, no matter the size of the list. OK, that's quite nice. Dun, dun, dun. So every element of the list has two valid indices. If you want to get x of 0, you can say x of 0, or you can say x of negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Yeah? That is the idea. OK, so let me just show you that briefly, the last element. The list x is comma, and then we say x of negative 1. Who cares what the length is? We don't have to care. And it's 2. OK, so it goes to the end of the list and gets the, the 2. So it's index 1 slash negative 1 in this example. OK, so that's how you index into a list. Let us continue. Let us continue with loops now, because loops are how you can move around a list. Uh, but of course, you can do much more with a, with a loop as well. Just to, to bring it back to you, remember that in Scratch, it was all about, OK, repeatedly do a bunch of stuff, whatever you put in here. OK, it gets repeated. Uh, for Python, it is going to look very similar to how we like change the if block into an if statement. There's going to be like some keywords, a colon, then in, some indentation, and some things like that. But at the end of the day, it's going to keep doing the same thing. It's always about coming back and doing uh, something repeatedly. That's all a loop is. So uh, let us begin. You actually know these already, again, because just like in Scratch, uh, you, ha you know how to repeat things. When you have a loop, there is always something, some piece of code that you want to keep on repeating a bunch of times over and over and over again. Uh, as long as you want, though. That repetition is, of course, under your control. You get to choose how much you want to repeat. Okay? So, uh, in Python, we have uh, not a repeat loop. We call, it, uh, we call it a while loop. Okay? That's the standard uh, loop in Python. And what it does is it executes its body. Again, the body is uh, the inside, the indented bit. You execute it as long as some condition is true. So, uh, gosh, how do I want? Do I want to wait for this next slide? Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Let's let's draw a little picture here first. There is a body. So there's a bunch of code that you want to run multiple times. This is we'll call it the body. And uh, it is controlled by some condition. Okay. So there's some condition that gives back true or false. And we want to execute this thing called the body as long as the condition is true. Okay? And so if this keeps happening, if it continues to be true, you're just going to keep doing the body forever. But eventually, maybe the condition is false, at which point you're done. Okay? This is like your rest, rest of your code down here. Dot, dot, dot. So that's essentially a while loop. You have a condition controlling a bunch of code that we call the body that gets repeated as long as the condition is true. OK, that's a while loop. Uh, it's very, very similar. The syntax is very, very similar to an if statement. Uh, but the body this time can be re-executed. So uh, you say while. And then you give some kind of condition, which is a Boolean value. It gives back true or false. And so I will call it a Boolean expression, a BEXP, because why not? So while. This B E X P, whatever it is, it could be some long thing like two plus two, check if it's four or something. As long as it's true, whatever this thing is, and then you indent, of course. Eee, so that's a tab. And then you give your uh, what you want to happen as long as it's true. So, like this is the body. Okay, we call it the body of the loop. Okay, and so all these lines they get indented is the idea, and 
uh, all this stuff gets repeated, all these lines get repeated as long as this Boolean expression is true. Okay, so this is how it works. Uh, all right, so uh, as long as it's true, execute the body. That's what it's going to do. So again, it's the condition. If it's true, execute the body. If this is true, we're going to execute the body once and then come back and recheck the condition. That is the idea. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll show you. Uh, do I want to do from here? No, we're going to get there in a second. Uh, one thing that I should say is forever loops. So you can't just say forever colon. How do you make a forever loop out of a while loop? How do you make sure that this body just keeps keeps getting repeated forever and ever and ever, and there is no false case? Like it just keeps doing this, this, this. What condition makes it so that the body always gets repeated? What condition is never false? Well, you can just say while true, and that's your forever loop. Some boolean value has to go here. Well, just put true, and then this will always get executed. Isn't that crazy? So, uh, let me show you this, and then uh, we'll talk about iteration on the next slide. Here we go. New file. Let's call this uh, forever.py. So we can say while true, so repeatedly, this is the forever loop, so this gets translated to forever, do the following. It'd be like print hello, print mom, something like that. Hello world, hi mom, things like that. Uh, I don't want to combine them. How about hello world, and then print this never gets run. Because this loop's going to keep repeating this body. It's never going to get to here. That's the idea. So, we you see how it is transitioning between hello and world. If you have a runaway program like this and you want to stop it, you say control C. Okay, that will stop this program and make it so that you can actually do work again. Okay, so that was our uh, forever loop. Okay, and yeah, control C stops a runaway, a runaway program with this infinite loop that we say. Okay, forever loop. Another word for that is infinite loop. Okay, uh, now let's let's do this thing called iteration. Okay, let us iterate. What I would like to do is print the numbers from one to ten in order. So first one, then two, then three, etc. You got it all the way down to ten, and we need to somehow not say the following. <laughs> we can't just say print one, print two. That's cheating, okay? We don't like that. What we need to do is figure out what's so similar about all these lines and maybe make a loop out of it, okay? So that's the idea. So notice that if we had a variable that was one, that was two, that was three, we just keep printing that variable, right? You could repeatedly Like if the variable is called i, you could print i, like maybe its first value was 1. And then uh, you want to keep printing i, and right now if you don't change it, it's going to say 1 again. So let's just make it 2. Increment i. So that'll make it 2. If you repeatedly do these two lines, you'll make first 1, then 2, then 3, all the way to 10. Won't you? Dot, dot, dot. Isn't that nice? You just repeatedly print an increment. All right, so uh, that's that's a start. Let's figure out what the condition should be. Dun dun dun. Do I want to call this iteration? Yeah, let's call this iteration dot pi. Over here we go. So uh, here is what we want. We want to repeatedly do those things. So maybe I'll put this on this side. There we go. So repeatedly while something print i and increment i, i equals i plus 1. Okay, so we want to start i at 1 so that the first thing we ever print when we get into this body is the 1. Okay, so we got to do that outside. Uh, 
and then repeatedly print i and increment uh, i. Okay, so this cannot be true because otherwise it will count forever. It'll never stop, right? And it'll keep on doing these things forever, never, never, and just keep on counting higher and higher. Yeah, I got to a thousand. Nice. Okay, so we need to tell it to stop. Don't continue. We need to make this thing false and stop after we just printed 10, right? And that's the last thing that we want to print. So we got to make sure that after we print 10, we stop. Okay, so let's pretend i is 10. Yeah, i is 10. We print it, then we increment it because we always do the body. So now i is 11. And now we don't want to continue. We don't want to continue with the body when i is 11. So we have to stop it. We've got to make sure that it's false when i is 11. Okay, so we could say uh, while i is not equal to 11, because then, like, it's not true. This is false when it's 1, when it's 2, when it's 10. But when it's 11, ooh, it is equal to 11. Oh, sorry, it's, it's true when it's 1, when it's 2, when it's 10. Yeah, those aren't, those aren't 11. But when it is 11, <laughs> then it is false. Okay, and that'll stop the loop. So this will work. Bam, 1 to 10. But this is not the style that most programmers use. They prefer to say continue printing while i is smaller than 11. We like to think of it that way. Like, it's getting bigger and eventually it might be too big, and that's when we want to stop, okay? While i is less than 11. And this will work again when i is 1. It's true. 1 is smaller than 11. It'll print 1. When it's 2, 2 is smaller than 11. It'll print 2. When it's 10, 10 is smaller than 11. It'll print it. But when it becomes 11, this is now not true. 11 is not strictly smaller than 11, and so it will stop the loop and uh, continue with whatever is down here. And there is nothing right now. Okay, so same thing. That's the more standard way of doing things. All right. Uh, now, I want, I want you to think about how you might do this in reverse. Okay, please please take a second to, to think about this. This is a very good exercise for you. Pause the video if you can. Uh, how would you do it in reverse? So, uh, the first thing that you want... Uh, excuse me. The first thing you want to print is... 10. And you keep going down and down and down all the way to 1. Oh my, that was an interesting feature. 10, 9, 8, all the way down to 1 this time. So if you're going to play the same game, I better start at 10, because you could repeatedly... Well, you could repeatedly print i. So that might print the 10. And then what do you do with i? You gotta make it smaller. You say, you decrement i is how you say it in one word. Say i equals i minus one. Now it's nine, print the nine. Hey, hey. And you want to keep printing. This is what, this is how you say it. Keep printing while, because i is going from 10 to nine all the way to one, while i is greater than zero is one way of saying it, or greater than or equal to one is another way of saying it. Okay, we need something that's true when we want to output, and something that becomes false when we want to stop outputting. Because eventually we're going to print the one, decrement i, and then i will be zero. And that is when we want to stop. We don't want to print zero, we want it to stop, so this better be false right then. I hope you see the game you have to play when you're writing a while loop. So, uh, that means the opposite way is, well, make i to start, while i is greater than or equal to 1, print i, decrement i, i equals i minus 1, okay? I hope you see that. This is repeatedly print i and decrement i. Okay, so we got uh, from 1 to 10, and then from 10 to 1. Maybe we should put uh, a line in between, so I can just say print nothing, and that'll print a blank line. It's easier to look at now. 10 to 1 now. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, now, one last example. I want to sum the numbers from 1 to 10. Okay, so uh, it's not good enough to print them, but that's a good start because we'll have the numbers. We want to sum them, and that means we need to keep track of the sum 
in a special variable. Yeah, it starts out at zero, and uh, like I explained when we talked about this in Scratch, you want to keep on adding this number into the sum each time. So, okay, zero plus one is one, make i two. Bring it back into sum now, add it into sum. So sum equals sum plus i, now one plus two is three, make i three. Bring i into sum, sum it into the variable. Three plus three is six, i is four, six plus four is 10. You see how this is working? So uh, if you want to sum the numbers from one to 10, you can usually, uh, or not usually, always essentially keep this, but just change the printing part to save the sum. Add the current number into the sum. Yeah, that's what you want. That is the trick. So this is uh, almost the same as this. Blank line. We're going to keep track of the sum now. I starts at one, sum starts at zero. Yeah. And now this is what we'll say. We'll say uh, not print I. Maybe I can get rid of this comment. Uh, not print I anymore, but add the current I into sum. Sum equals sum plus I. You see that? And now i equals i plus 1. And we can say print sum. OK? The sum from 1 to 10 is all the numbers from 1 to 10. How about that? Is sum, whatever is left in it. Because we start with i at 1. And so we'll add 1 into sum, starting at 0. Increment i. So we'll add 2 into sum, increment i add 3 into sum, increment i, add 4 into sum, because i keeps changing. And then the last thing we'll add, because that's the last thing that makes this true, is we'll add 10 into sum. That's the last number we add, and so then i becomes 11. This is no longer true, so we stop the loop, come down here, and print the sum that we worked so hard to, uh, to figure out. So it looks like it was 55, yeah? That is loops. Loops uh, iterate, we say. Okay, we're, we're iterating. I is called our iteration variable. It's going from one to ten, or ten to one if we're doing the reverse. Okay, so uh, let's let's get fancier. You can iterate through a list. Oh, -ho. you can iterate through a list with a while. Loop. Let me show you this. So if you have a list X you know the first index, yeah? That's zero, always zero. You might not know, unless you made the list yourself, oops, where the last index is. You know it's, you know it's four if you draw it, but we're not sure yet how we got there. So the trick is use len. Len is five for this example. It has five things. The very last element, the last index, is just the len of the list minus one. Yeah, that's the trick. That is how you know the last index. And now you can do a while loop where you uh, make your index variable go between 0 and 4, in between 0 and the length minus 1. Yeah? So now uh, that's all you need to print a list with a while loop. Are you ready? So, like, you got your start, oops, start equals 0, end equals len of your list L or X, whatever it is, minus one, okay? And so then you'll say something like while, uh, after starting your index variable at zero, you'll say something like while uh, I is less than or equal to the end, okay? Or maybe you can just make the start instead, because we used to start. I guess start was unnecessary, but helpful when we first learn it. Okay, so this is the kind of loop that you'll essentially be doing. Okay, it's uh, you just keep on iterating with i going from 0 to the last index that you want, which is len of the list minus 1. Okay, so let me show you how to iterate through a list now. Let's, let's, go, through, let's go through x and just print everything out, because why not? Iteration, here's my list. I will call it L this time, just to mix things up. L equals 
one, two, three, four, five. And now let's iterate through all the indices of L. So the very first index is zero. Uh, so we'll start our i at zero. Or you know what, we don't even have to use i. We can use j, who cares? And then you want to continue. The last index you want to consider is the length of the list minus one. Okay, so j is gonna go between zero and inclusive length of the list minus one. And you better make sure to increment j each time you do something. Otherwise, it'll just stay at zero forever. Okay, so now all we have to do is do something with L of J inside this loop because J is going to be a valid index right here. Okay, so you can just print it out if you'd like. Uh, new line. Might as well print, uh, let's see here, L at index j is, and we can say l at index j. Yeah, how about that? Or we can use a colon if we wanted to, and then increment j. So here's how it's working. l at index zero, because j starts at zero, and this is all true, is one, yes it is. And then we increment j to be one, and it will give us this index, l of j, is uh, going to go at the first index now, the one-th index, and L of index one is two. So J was one, L of J was two. J becomes three, uh, L of J becomes, no, sorry, J becomes two, L of J becomes three, and so on and so forth for all the valid indices in this, uh, in this list. If you messed up and you put like a strictly less than here, you won't hit all of the indices because then it'll only go up to three. You see that? So you gotta make sure that all of your conditions for your while loops are very precise because otherwise you miss out on things. Okay, it doesn't do quite what you want. It's a logic error, yeah? Okay, so uh, for my last trick, I wanna show you a cool example of drawing 50 squares of random sizes and random colors, okay? So uh, we did a bit of this last time. So let me go and open up uh, the random stuff from last time and we'll use that as a starting point. So here we are. And remember that I copied a bunch of stuff because we didn't know how to do loops yet. So it's gonna work. It's gonna draw a bunch of things. Oh, we have to pick a color, blue. It's gonna draw five squares exactly. But uh, it's doing it in this horrible, horrible way where we're repeating code. We don't like that. So let us fix it. Let's get rid of all this repetition. Boop, boop, boop. There's the first one, I think. Yeah. That's the first one. So we want to repeatedly do everything between here and here. Yeah. So we need to repeat all of this. Repeat it. Not five times, 50 times. Are you ready? Uh, let's say turtle dot speed fastest we have places to go turtle and let's set the color to just be hard-coded for now let's make it blue uh, we'll fix this later while i is less than or equal to 50 well, let's do this a bunch of times we'll start i at one and I will go between one and 50, which means this will execute 50 times, yeah? But I made a bit of a mistake. Do you see it? I forgot to add one to I down here. Otherwise it'll stay at one forever and that'll be an infinite loop. So we have to always remember to advance I, our iteration variable, the one that's gonna eventually cause this while loop to stop. So now it's gonna make 50, uh, 50 black squares for some odd reason. Uh, why is that? Oh, I think I accidentally erased something about color. So, uh, well, let's do this. Let's set the color in here. So 
fill color. Uh, we'll just make it blue for now. I think that should work. And get rid of it there. And so now we have blue squares, 50 of them exactly. It'll eventually stop. And wasn't it a lot cleaner to do this in a while loop? It's like, okay, I am going to repeat all of this, and that is all going to be in one nice spot for me. Okay, so uh, this is the idea. In here, we draw a square with a random side length. But we also want to pick a random color. That's the cool new thing. Okay, so uh, here's how we, we will pick a random color. We're going to make a list of colors and we're going to index into that list at a random spot. Okay, that is the secret. So if I do this, I need to make a list of colors first. So, like, I don't know, colors red, orange yellow, green, they have to be strings, remember, blue, I assume, these are all in there, purple, those are my colors, and instead of saying color blue, I'm going to pick a random index into colors, okay? And this is where things get a bit weird, uh, I have to figure out which of these indices are valid, remember that, so uh, I can hard code it or I can just write it, uh, but we need to use random again. Remember how to use random. You give it two numbers and it gives you a random number between this number and this number inclusive. So we want a random number, a random index between 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And if we didn't know, uh, we didn't know to put 5 here, we could use len of colors minus one, that's the last valid index, okay? And now this is where the cool thing happens. Instead of filling the color to blue, we go to colors at this random index. Isn't that fun? And this will pick, because it picked a random number between zero and five, if random index was uh, three, it would go and get out the third thing, the so index three thing, in the colors list. So 0, 1, 2, 3, it would have made it green. It would have got out the green. It would have replaced this with just the string green. If the random index happened to be chosen to be 1, it would go to the colors list and get the thing at index 1, which is orange. And it would make the fill color orange. That is insane. Okay, so this is where the random color happens. You got to go to a random index in this colors list. And you can put more colors if you'd like. So, uh, without any further ado, let me show you how this works. So, we're looping 50 times with the while loop, with our iteration variable, and we're also picking a random color by uh, taking advantage of the indices of this list. The valid indices are 0 through the len minus 1, which is 5. Okay, so each time, each time it comes to this, so this body of the loop, it's going to pick a different color because it's going to repeat all of this code all over again. Are you ready? Yeah. And this is some cool abstract art. Uh, if you made the, the window big enough, you can make a nice background for yourself. Isn't that fun? This is, this is wonderful. We're getting to cool stuff now. So uh, this is a wonderful little example, and you'll be using it a lot in your programming assignment. So let me go pull that up, and then that'll be it. Okay, for your next programming assignment, you're going to be drawing random squares and triangles, okay, of uh, fancy random colors, okay? So here is what I want you to do. I want you to ask the user using input to enter a number, okay? Uh, I'll call it n for the rest of this example, but you're going to get n from the user, and you're going to use that to draw that many shapes. So if the user gives you 37, you're going to draw 37 shapes. So you better use input, okay? And you better convert that input to an int as well, okay? And then you're going to do the following n times, which is going to end up drawing one shape each time, okay? So I want you to set the color of the turtle to a random color. You can use a lot more than I did. Here's a list of a bunch of different colors that you can set the turtle to. You just give these in string form. 
Aren't those fun? So you have all those options at your disposal. Uh, that's what the turtle knows about. And then, okay, I want you to pick not just uh, the random color. I want you to pick whether or not to draw a square or a triangle. Okay? So, the turtle doesn't know immediately. You have to randomly pick. Maybe pick a random number and say, okay, if it's one, I will draw a square. If it's two, I will draw a triangle. But you cannot pick this ahead of time. Okay? Each time, you need to determine whether or not to draw a square or a triangle randomly. Okay? You can use numbers for that. So when your program runs, it should draw some squares and some triangles. N total. So uh, maybe it draws, I don't know, 30 squares and seven triangles. They need to add up to 37. And it needs to be random. Okay? That's the idea. So the total number of shapes will be n, but uh, you have no clue what the number of squares and triangles will be because that's random each time you pick whether or not to draw a square or to draw a triangle. Okay? And then again, give it a random size and give it a random color. Okay? At that, at a randomly chosen location as well. So lots of randomness going on. You're going to do very similar things to everything I just showed you here, but you're going to have to change this 50 to be what the user wanted, because maybe they typed like 7. You're going to have to uh, figure out whether or not to draw a square or a triangle. So you can copy this, but you can't always use it. You have to sometimes draw a square, sometimes draw a triangle. Okay? Uh, the rest of this is very similar. You've got to pick a starting location, things like that. Uh, so it'll be similar to your previous assignment and uh, to the examples in class. So it shouldn't be too bad, uh, but it is a bit challenging. That's the point, right? Everything gets a little bit harder as we go, but you're ready. All right, so as usual, upload a video of, uh, of your code running and following all these, uh, all these rules, and uh, I think that's it. So please yell at me if you have any questions about anything. Uh, this is a fun little assignment. I think it's going to be very colorful. So look forward to that, and I look forward to uh, grading them. So I will see you next week.